Hey everyone, in this video we'll cover how to do a pre-op inspection on a backhoe loader. Now this video is sponsored by Ariat. Because of partners like that, we're able to provide awesome training content like this. So check this out. Okay, so this is how to conduct a pre-op inspection for a backhoe loader. Now, first and foremost, I tell everyone up front, I'm not an expert. I'm also not a diesel mechanic. I like to go over these because I like to show, especially new operators, that you don't need to be a diesel mechanic to do an overview, a pre-op inspection on a piece of equipment. A lot of it is just really basic items to be looking for. Uh, it's also one of the most important things, I think, to do before you operate any piece of equipment. So with that said, I'm gonna go, go into it. I am, uh, we've started testing ha having a handheld camera, which I can then kind of zoom in. I know we've got a lot of comments about people wanting to see exactly what we're looking at. So we've started using this. So I'll try and point out specific things as I see them. Now, my pre-ops, as you've seen in other videos, I break it down really in three sections. There is no right or wrong way. I just, all I say is get in a routine and follow that routine. It doesn't matter what piece of equipment. My first is always my general walk around. I just do a visual. It's kind of my big picture to see if anything obvious, because sometimes we get so close, we kind of miss some of those big picture things just because we're focusing so tight on it. Second is the compartment check. That's where I am gonna open up any compartments, get a little bit more uh, in depth. And then my third and final is the operator's seat. Basically getting in the cab, do my final inspection there. So with that said, here's how I do my pre-op inspection. Okay, for some, my general walk around, again, starting wherever you start, I try and be consistent. I'm usually on the driver's, uh, whatever the door, the cab is. But I'm starting top to bottom, left to right, looking for anything obvious with a, this backhoe loader. So if I see anything that, any damage, anything like that, but that starting up front with the backhoe loader, I'm looking at the tires. You know, you're looking at uh, tread wear on these. Is there any damage to the tires at all? Anything like that. Looking at the planetaries, the drive systems on the inside, making sure there's nothing loose, there's nothing leaking. But that's also then on the front, just looking overall uh, inflation. Does it look properly inflated? And then you're also going to look and make sure all your lug nuts, everything's secured on there. You're looking to make sure all those are connected. And then the actual drive system, the planetary there, making sure there's no leaks. Uh, this is how you would check your oil level. Uh, we don't do that daily, but you can actually um, put that level and open that up to see the level of the fluid in there. Um, but again, oh, on a pre-op inspection, just checking basic overview of it. From there, I'm looking anywhere where there's a joint. I'm not only, you know, I'm looking to make sure it looks greased appropriately so you can see there's grease coming out of there, but I'm also checking all of the hydraulic hoses. Now, it's really important when these hoses, I've said this in other videos, don't ever grab these. They're under extremely high pressure and it's very easy. If you were to break one of those, uh, you'd really hurt yourself. So you're just looking if there's damage, if it's frayed, if it is bulging at all, anything like that, or if there's any leaks around any of those. So again, everything there, the exhaust stack I'm looking at up top, making sure it's intact, not cracked, not damaged, anything like that. Again, continuing. Same thing on the back, top, looking any damage, anything like that. And then the rear tire. So same thing, I'm looking for any damage, making sure it looks proper inflation on it. You know, sometimes you can catch anything on the tread if there's uneven tread wear or something you might want to call attention to. And then same thing, all the, the it's secured on there, there's no loose bolts, and then there's no leaks or anything uh, from the drive system there in the center. No, uh, nothing obvious there. So, continuing around the rear, again, I always start top to bottom, make sure there's no damage on the cab, the lights, everything like that. Coming down, your outriggers, making sure that your pads, uh, usually outriggers have two different sides. One is for like asphalt or a hard surface, and you can actually flip these and uh, use the other side if it's a softer kind of dirt. But making sure they're pins, I can see everything here. Everything is attached, secured in there. There's no damage, nothing like that on there. Everything's secured. I'm looking at the main place then where all the hydraulic lines pass through. And this is a good area that if you're gonna see an issue or anything like that, you're gonna look under there and you're gonna see leaking damage um, anything that kind of sticks out to you there. Hydraulic cylinders, any of the cylinders, you're looking at those to make sure that nothing looks, if there's a leak around the seal or anything like that, that's obvious. Um, any of these are things that you'd want to kind of investigate further. My boom lock is intact, looks secure, anything like that. And I'm kind of looking up along the back of the boom arm. Again, you follow those lines all the way up and seeing if there's any damage, anything like that. 
making sure all the pins, everything is secured. I'm just, again, eyeballing these really quickly. You know, if one of these uh, kind of cotter pins was out, that means that could work its way out. So you wanna make sure all of those are secured. Same thing with grease. I'm kind of looking to see, noting if it looks like it needs grease at all. If there's not any, if it looks really dry, that might be something that you're gonna wanna address. Same thing, looking over the top, the lines, everything like that. And then while I'm around the back, I always like to look underneath my equipment. So this is where, if it's been parked for a while, you can see if there's any leaks or anything that might be underneath the cab of the equipment. Like this one, I can actually see there's a little bit of dripping water. It's actually water from the air conditioner because we were running it earlier, but um, just because you can tell where it's at. Um, if it's under the engine is up front, that's where you'd see the leaks there. If it was directly under there, it'd be the hydraulic lines. You can also see the bottom uh, lines, hydraulic lines there. Um, so again, all these, there's a lot of moving parts. You want to make sure there's no leaks, that none of the lines look damaged, anything like that. Same thing, pins on this side and the hoses. And again, on the top, starting up top, looking down, any damage to the cab. Same thing, outrigger on this side, making sure no damage. Continuing, again, this outrigger, looking at the pins, intact. Again, starting at the top, seeing no damage there. Same thing on the tire on this side. Looks properly inflated, uh, no damage, nothing looks, uh, you know, if there's some, sometimes you'll have a piece of rebar, something could stick in it and it's not completely, hasn't uh, ruined the tire yet. So you want to catch those. Same thing, making sure it is all the lug nuts are on. It's secured, no leaks. Again, continuing over. Obviously you want to make sure you have your mirrors intact, everything like that. When I'm on this side of the equipment, this is actually where uh, you check the hydraulic fluid. So you want to look at that line. You should be in between those two lines. Continuing around the front. Same thing with these cylinders. If I were to see any leaks or anything around that seal on any of the cylinders, you're looking for that. And again, same thing with all of these lines. Again, it's just a quick kind of glance over. Front tire, same thing. Any damage to the tire, looks properly inflated. Lug nuts are all on. Again, on the inside, making sure everything looks secure. There's no damage hanging there. And then behind the bucket. Again, kind of making sure all the connections, no pins are missing, nothing seems uh, loose, properly greased, no damage that I can see. The main hydraulic lines that are going up for the bucket cylinder. While I'm up here, the radiator, if I can see if there's any damage to the uh, grate there, anything like that I want to address. Once I'm on the front of the machine, looking at the, uh, if there is any damage to the bucket, anything over that kind of sticks out on the bucket itself, but also the wear, any wear edge on this. So the front blade here, you know, this is, this unbolts. This is what you use for your cutting edge on this. And you want to make sure you catch that early. If this is worn down, you want to replace it before using, otherwise you're going to end up not only having to replace a uh, the edge, you're gonna be doing some work on your bucket. But you can see you're always gonna, on the corners should always wear, generally they're gonna wear faster than the center. So you can see that, it, but it looks proper on this machine. And then again, just looking on the front of the machine, seeing if you see any damage, anything sticks out at all, looking at this side of the bucket then. Again, all my primary lines are coming through there. No damage, everything looks secure. All the pins are in. It looks proper greasing levels in there. My quick attach is in there. I can see that hose in there, seeing if there's any damage. Again, just really, you don't have to be a diesel mechanic to see something that just, hey, this doesn't look right. Okay, so that's my first. That's my first is general walk around. Again, I usually do it a lot quicker, but to point everything out. Okay, after the walk around, again, if I do this properly for mine, at least I do two full circles because one is going to be the general walk around, then two is going to be compartments. So uh, second is going to be compartments on the machine. Really on this one, there's a small battery compartment on this side, but generally it's the engine compartment. We're going to walk around the other side. Okay, like I said, this video wouldn't be possible without Area Boots. They're our video sponsor for this. I got my Area on right here. Check this out. Hey everyone, just want to jump in with a quick shout out to Area. Yeah, we get a lot of companies that reach out to us and want to help promote their products or services, but we want to stand by in products that we actually use, and we've been loving Area. We're not spokesmodels, but we're doing the best we can, and uh, we've been wearing these ever since. Well, I think it's one about quality of product, but to me, the bigger thing was Area reached out because of our training content. They yep. were more, it was more important to them about supporting the industry, which is bigger to me. So please help support the ones that are supporting us by clicking on their link below. Go buy their products, check them out. I guarantee you're gonna love them. Okay, and then really the compartment for the backhoe loader is just the engine compartment. So on the John Deere, 
hood release. I'll make sure I can see this hood release right there and flip this up. Now there are two different ways on the John Deere. This is a half open. Uh, you actually need to have the boom all the way up locked out if you want to open this hood all the way. Generally for a pre-op, you can catch everything just by getting halfway up. So open it up. While I'm up here though, before I get down, I'm just looking over the top of it. Seeing again, I don't need to be a mechanic to see if something doesn't look right. I can also see the coolant uh, tank right there. And it's tough maybe to see, but you can see on the side, the level. I'll be able to show you on the other side too. It's one thing that's kind of tough to see when it's halfway open, but making sure it's cool it tank there and then again just looking bird's eye view anything over the top here that looks like it might be uh, damaged leaking anything like that and then really the only thing for fluid check on the backhoe loader so you've got two different you got a dipstick for the oil and then this is for the transmission transmission on a backhoe loader you don't I think John Deere recommends every 250 hours we do it monthly um, just because they're not like cars they don't drive you don't put that many miles on that transmission so the engine oil though you do want to check daily Looking at that, making sure it's full. And then after that, just looking again, looking inside to see if there's anything that kind of sticks out. There is the, you don't have a clear sight glass for the fuel filter here, but you can drain out. Um, there's a drain out that to drain out if there's any water or sediment in the fuel filter. But again, looking at that, and then I can also see my radiator fan in here. So if you look in here, you can see the back of it, seeing if there's any damage, anything like that. I'm checking this side, I'm gonna check the other side. And then again, coming on this side, same thing. I'm just looking in to see if I see any damage, any, any loose, any, uh, again, anything that just sticks out. I don't need to be a diesel mechanic to say, hey, that doesn't look right. Uh, finally, on this one, I was telling you, if you, on the John Deere's at least, if you push this down a little bit, I can actually see the marker. I don't know if you'll see it that well on this camera, but that's how you check the coolant. Obviously, very important to check the coolant. Okay, and that was the finish of the compartment check. The third and final is getting in the operator seat. Okay, so after I do all that, I just get in the operator's seat. Uh, first of all, I just make sure full range of motion on everything. Nothing feels, there's no damage to anything there. Um, you can check the back too, your backhoe controls. Seeing if anything obvious is damage in here. And then after that, I go ahead with John Deere, start it up. Seeing if once I turn the battery on, making sure there's no warnings or indicators on here that would tell me not to start it. And then there we go. Now, honestly, here in the, I'd like to start up and consider part of my pre-op, it's, it's more audible. So I'm just, is there anything that doesn't sound right to the machine? So that's the final thing I'm checking, is this listening? Um, and then seeing as I go up, if there's any indicators or anything like that. And then finally, I just check my fuel. So you can see fuel levels there, uh, making sure, you know, nothing abnormal there, and we're good to go. Next step is once I actually go to digging or moving the machine, I'll do a cycle of the controls just to make sure they're operable. But that's how you do a pre-op inspection on a backhoe loader. Okay, again, that's how to do a pre-op on a backhoe loader. Please share comments below if you work on one of these machines regularly. If there's something I missed or thing, tips or tricks you have, let me know. And again, big shout out and thank you to Ariat. Uh, this video wouldn't have happened without them. So if there's one way you can help support us is go click the link below, go check out their product, help support the people that are supporting us. Thanks a lot. We'll see you in the next video.